In this video, um, we're going to discuss uh, Kennedy approach when Kennedy's on the three ones. This is specifically for people who like to fly on the VATSIM network. I'm going to give you a little bit of visibility into what air traffic control expects you to do and why the procedures are the way they are and why you'll find that some VATSIM Kennedy controllers will get very upset with you when you break policy and procedure. So I'm going to talk about the most uh, important things to know. Um, especially if you're flying into Kennedy for an event and they're on the three ones. It's important you understand this. So let's take a look at the chart view first. I'm going to talk about departure, then approach, and arrivals. So there are two uh, departures, three technically, that you will be assigned out of Kennedy. The most common are the score five departure and Kennedy five departure. Every once in a while, you can file or will be assigned the D's departure. But that is only if you are actually um, going to be flying on a specific uh, jet uh, route. But in this case, most of the time, you're probably not going to be flying the D's 5 r nav departure. However, it obeys the very same rules that um, the SCORE 5 departure obeys when it's on the three ones. So we'll talk about the SCORE 5 first, which is the most commonly assigned unless your aircraft is not... I repeat, not RNAV capable. RNAV stands for area navigation. I would suggest if you're unfamiliar with area navigation or RNAV, just take a quick uh, YouTube search of it. And there are plenty of videos explaining what RNAV is. So let's talk about it here. When we zoom into the plate, we can see the visual representation of the plate itself. Kennedy typically departs 3-1 left and arrives 3-1 right and visual 3-1 left. Um, for VATSIM, most of the time you will find us on the ILS 31 right, visual 31 left, if conditions permit. Now, you depart 31 left on a 314 heading and turn left heading 238 to score. Once you hit score, you're going to fly your assigned transition. This is typically Ranger or Yankee. So you will be cleared via the score 5 departure ranger transition or the Yankee transition and told to climb via the SID. What does that mean, climb via the SID? Well, what that means is that we expect you to fly this departure, and if you were assigned, let's say, the Yankee transition, we expect by this point you must be above, at or above, 2,500 feet at SESID. And then you continue on out to Yankee. The top altitude on this procedure is 5,000 feet, 5K. Same thing goes for Ranger 5K. But if you were assigned the Ranger transition, you now need to cross METs at or above 2,500 feet. Please obey these crossing restrictions. They are very, very important for multiple reasons. So you have all of that importance on the plate itself. But why, why are you detailing this, Joe? Why does this matter? This is the most common error on VATSIM that I have seen operating New York airspace is this magical moment right here. It's right at the beginning of your flight. You're excited, excited to make your flight over to Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. And uh, here we go. We're on our way out and we make a right turn to merit. M-E-R-I-T. Uh, this is a no-no. No, don't do this. Please don't do this. We know you're going to merit. Don't do this. Why? We'll discuss it in a moment. This error right here, this turn, so many people forget to do it or they blame their FMS or their GPS or because grandma was cooking her uh, fried fish and burnt the fish and some other excuse that I've heard. So here's the most important thing to know is please do not make a right turn. Never make a right turn when you've been assigned the score five departure. Making a right turn or going straight ahead this way is wrong. And the reason for this is quite simple. And I'm going to show you. This is the Kennedy uh, video map. And you can see LaGuardia over here in Teterboro and Newark. But here's what matters most. Is this beautiful line right here. This is what we like to call the airspace separation line. Sometimes it, it, it varies, but we're just going to visualize it here because it's the easiest to visualize. You guys don't need to understand about Belmont and Belmont extensions and the Coney airspace. You guys don't need to worry about that. I'm just visualizing it for you guys um, so that you have an idea of what we're looking at here. Now, this 
for very simple purposes is LaGuardia Airspace. Well, technically, we'll do LaGuardia Airspace is here. So I'm actually going to fix that. I don't have the uh, LaGuardia Newark separation map open, but we'll just go like this uh, so you guys have an idea. This is Newark. This is LaGuardia. E W R L G A. And we will do in green J F K. Now, you have been assigned score five departure and your name is John Doe and you are flying the score five departure properly. You have made Kennedy departure so happy. Congratulations, you have done your job correctly and you are on your way. And even if you were off 3-1 right, you're also doing that. Now, Johnny on the spot has decided to log on to Vatsim. And Johnny on the spot has never fly, flown the score five departure. And he's going to Boston via uh, the uh, Kennedy five departure. Or, uh, sorry, the score five departure. Uh, Radar vectors to merit to join the Roebuck three arrival into Boston. He is so excited that he fails to brief the approach plate. And what does Johnny on the spot do in his brand new A321? Well, Johnny on the spot fails to make the turn and blows straight into LaGuardia's airspace. Or my personal favorite, guys, is Johnny on the spot so excited to go to Boston, he then decides to turn right direct to Merit. M-E-R-I-T. Merit. Now... Johnny on the spot, although he is very excited, has just put uh, Kennedy into a pickle, LaGuardia into a deeper fried pickle, and the pilot that is on the RNAV X-ray 3-1 into LaGuardia into a death spiral. Why? Well, let's discuss it. Let's put, uh, put Mr. Professional ATP pilot, who's flying the approach into LaGuardia here, and he's doing the RNAV X-ray 3-1 approach into this way. Again, not to scale, not completely accurate with fixes. You guys get the idea. And he's on the RNAV X-ray 3-1 approach into LaGuardia. And he's been cleared to 4 and then 3 and then 2.5 all the, all the way down. But he needs to make a right turn, then a left turn. It's actually a really fun approach. I highly suggest trying it out. Problem is, is that Johnny on the spot has now departed Kennedy. So excited to get to Boston, he made the right turn instead of left turn. And he has now busted into LaGuardia's final airspace. This is a massive problem. Why is this a massive problem? Well, because he's about to kill someone. You have professional pilot here on the RNAV X-ray 3-1 approach into LaGuardia at 3,000. You have Johnny on the spot now, climbing the 5,000 off the SID, not even close. Climbing to 5,000. He's now going to cause a direct conflict. Simply said, guys, there is zero, zero, zero case in which you are assigned the score five departure and should be going straight or turning right. You should never, ever, ever be doing this. Do not do that and do not do that. Green is good. Do what the green says. You will get radar vectors once you are on course to Yankee or to Ranger, sometimes even sooner. Sometimes you'll get turned off here and started going out this way. Maybe you'll even get a tighter turn like a 050 and start climbing above. Now, the other thing to mention about the departure procedures, I'm going to clean this up really quick now that we understand that we should never go straight or turn right. Another thing to understand about the departure procedure out of Kennedy is when we're turning this way, going that way, this way. When we are doing this, our top altitude is 5,000 feet per the SID. 5,000. You will get climbed during an event a max of 7,000 feet in this very immediate block. The reason for that is because when we have arrivals coming in via the Kingston 1 or the Lendy 8 arrival, these guys will be coming in from high above and they will be descending from flight level 190, eventually down to 8,000 feet. Let's take a look at them. They're coming in over Lendy, which is off screen here, but I can extend it out. Uh, that's not where the arrow goes. So they're coming in typically via 180, 190 heading, depending upon what the wind's doing for the day. And they're coming in this way. 
and they'll get vectored in to the arrival flow into Kennedy. And we're just going to visualize the approaches here. Okay. Now, you as a pilot do not care about airspace. <clears throat> as an IFR pilot, that's the air traffic controller's job to descend you when they are good and ready to do it. Guys, we are well aware of where you are. I promise. We are, we are looking and we are watching your data block. When you're departing Lindy, you're going to get 16,000, eventually to 13,000, eventually to 8,000. Please, God, do not ask the controller, uh, are you going to give us a descent? Yes, we are, we are giving you a descent. We are not going to descend you lower than 8,000 until you're in the next airspace block. Why? Well, because we just discussed, we have the score five departures and Kennedy five departures uh, via the different climbs all coming out this way and they're climbing to seven. We can't descend you until we get these guys all on course. So the next rule of flying into Kennedy, please don't ask controller for lower. Same thing goes for LaGuardia. We know, we are well aware that, you know, you are high up and that you will see, you'll be here on this beautiful 180 heading and you're going to see the airport off your nine o'clock in about 10 miles and you're going to be like, wow, this guy has me really high. Yes, that, that is completely normal. You are kept very high and then you are slowly but surely descended to 5,000 to 4,000 to 3,000 and you're brought into the arrival flow with everybody else. Now, uh, we've discussed this. Let's just quickly hop over to the Kennedy 5 departure just so you guys can see. It's very similar. We can see here the Kennedy 5 departure is assigned for multiple different runways. We care about 3-1 left and right. There are three climbs, Breezy Point, Canarsie, Idlewild. Idlewild, assigned to non-turbojet aircraft. You will only be assigned the idle while climb if you are a non-turbojet aircraft. If you are a turbojet aircraft, congratulations, you will be assigned either the Breezy Point or Canarsie climb. Every once in a while, if it is late night periods uh, off the 22s, you'll get assigned the Gateway climb off the 22s. But in this case, we're just going to discuss the two most common, which is the Breezy Point and the Canarsie climb. We take a look here and lo and behold, what do we see? The idle while goes right because that's keeping everyone who's slower outside of the way of the jets. But we can see the left turn here. Where's it going? It's going to Canarsie, which if we look at the score five departure, there's Canarsie as well. It's like they plan this whole thing out, guys. Left turn, left turn, left turn. Everything is a left turn unless you've been assigned the idle while climb. You can see the Breezy Point climb will take you to Ranger. The Canarsie climb will take you to the Yankee area. You can see if we open up the score five departure, my Lord, it's like it's almost overlaid because it's designed that way. So we can see here it's a left turn to Canarsie, 223 radial outbound or the 176 radial outbound. You guys can read the text description here. Top altitude's 5,000 feet. And you can see that you must cross the Canarsie 3.0 DME radial or the uh, 3.0 DME or the Kennedy 253 radial at or above 2500. It's amazing because it's like it's aligned with the RNAV departure because it is. So left turns, left turns, left turns. I think I have gotten through to everyone here about left turns. So let's hop back into the arrival flows now. I'm going to show you guys just uh, a brief understanding of how the arrivals work into Kennedy. So you have a brief understanding of what to expect on a busy day coming into Kennedy. So let's open this up. Let's start with the most common, the Cameron uh, 4 arrival. Cameron 4 arrival will be going via Cameron and they will get typically a 040 off of Cameron. Uh, for the ILS 3-1 right approach, unless they're going to GA, which they'll get a uh, 3-1 left. Pretty simple. Very, very simple. Nothing to it. It's actually a really simple arrival. Now, let's throw in the next arrival. Let's throw in the Lendy arrival. The Lendy arrival will be coming in this way to Lendy, and you will be told to depart Lendy heading 180 or 190 or 170. It all depends upon the, what's the winds doing, but 180 is usually the standard. You will be brought down to a 180 heading and eventually brought into the flow here with everybody else. And eventually you will be brought on to the localizer and you'll be happy-go-lucky. <clears throat> 
The Kingston Arrival. The IGN 1 Arrival. You will be coming in this way. To Lindy as well. Now, both the Lindy 8 Arrival and the Kingston 1 Arrival have something in common. You're both published to go to LaGuardia. So we will just quickly highlight that so you guys have that vis visual here. You guys are both told to go to LaGuardia. Please, if you are told the words depart, I'm just going to put depart, Lendy, heading 180. That does not mean do it now. Depart, Lendy, heading 180. What the controller expects you to do is once you reach Lendy, which is right here, you are going to fly heading of 180. Please do not ever, period, do not turn right heading 180 here. Because now, what have we done? We have now gotten into Newark's airspace. And we're going to be getting into LaGuardia's airspace. And Liberty Departure's airspace. And New York Center's airspace. And we're going to be just upsetting so many people depending upon what altitude we're at. Do not do this. When you hit Lendy, fly heading 180. That is what you are supposed to do. We are very, very clear in what we expect. In certain configurations, this would be Correct, we will tell you to depart LaGuardia heading 130, depending upon the configuration, which is a completely different situation. However, if we're running the three ones, you will be expected to depart Lendy heading 180 when it's issued to you. Let's take a look at the, the, uh, the star really quick so you guys have a visual on this. Here's the star. The Lendy 8 arrival. We can see here we come out of Wilkes Bar to Jeno, and we're expecting flight level 230 from New York Center, to Hardy to Stillwater, and to Lendy. Turbo jets, you can expect 250 knots at and maintain flight level 190. You can see we depart Lendy direct to LaGuardia, and we can expect radar vectors to the final approach course after the LaGuardia VOR. Now, the exception to that is when Kennedy's on certain configs, where you will be departing Lendy on that beautiful 180 heading. This is not scale, but it will give you an idea. You're going to come out all the way here. You'll get vectored in this way, and you're going to be coming in, and you are just going to shoot the approach gorgeously because you are amazing. You're not going to blow through the localizer like I annotated there, but you get the idea. On certain configs, like uh, if we were on the 4s or the RNAV for the 1.3s, you would be getting that 135, 130 off of LaGuardia. However, for the 3.1s, you can usually expect them to issue you heading 180 off of Lundy. So you can expect that. Please do not turn before that point. Very simple. Kingston 1 arrival, you'll see it is very similar. We hit Lundy and we depart Lundy again towards LaGuardia. So those are the two most common arrivals that are coming from both uh, Boston and from uh, New York Center. So, what are the other ones? The Cameron 4 arrival. This is coming from D.C. You're coming uh, from the D.C. area. So, coming from the south. Sea Isle, Hogs, Pansy, Cars, Cameron. And you can expect radar vectors to the final approach fix in use. Um, so, you can see, expect 250, 11,000 feet of Cameron. Pretty self-explanatory. That's what you can expect. If we hop over to the Parch 3 arrival. The Parch 3 is coming from Boston as well. You're going to get trait. You can expect 240 from Boston, and then you can expect 12,250 knots at Calverton, where you will be handed off to New York Approach Control. The Rober 2 arrival is very similar to the Parch arrival. It is slightly different. However, it brings you to the exact same thing. Calverton, Rober, expect to cross at 9. Sometimes you will get lower. The Pauling 2 arrival. Uh... This is applicable to uh, props and turboprops operating 250 knots or less. You'll get Bridgeport to Belt to Deer Park. And magically enough, you can expect loves at 6,000 feet. Now, how does this apply when we come to the video map? Well, all the arrival flows into Kennedy are well designed because Kennedy is a very busy airport. 
So I'm just going to quickly draw these out for you guys. We have, we'll just do the uh, Lindy and the Kingston arrivals. They're going to come in this way and they will eventually be fed in this way for the ILS 31 right. Now, we then have the Cameron arrival in orange. Cameron comes in this way and they join the flow here. And they also are vectored. We then, excuse me, we then have the Parch and Rober. Parch and Rober in hot pink. Parch and Rober, you're coming to Calverton. And then from Calverton, you're going to Rober. And then you're typically going to Rec Kennedy. You'll be told typically to depart Rober on a heading. My Lord, it's like there's a habit of depart. Not repart depart mm, you guys get the idea depart rober heading and an assigned heading that heading can completely change based upon how busy the arrival flow from the north and south is if kennedy final is getting absolutely hammered which can happen you will get a wider uh intercept angle that you'll need to go depart uh rober heading let's say 220 or 230 as it gets tighter, it's going to essentially mean, you know, the busyness. But that doesn't matter to you. You will get vectored off of Rober, typically. Sometimes, if it's not busy, you'll just uh, not get a heading at all off Rober, and you'll continue towards Kennedy, and then brought off uh, towards the localizer. But that comes uh, time to time. Now, last but not least, the polling. Uh, the polling arrival uh, brings you from Bridgeport to Belt to Deer Park. So... Take a look here. Bridgeport to Belt to Deer Park. It's something like that, roughly, to give you an idea. Um, and then you'll get radar vectors off of Deer Park um, for the approach. So this is essentially uh, the way that the arrival flows go into New York. So it is very important to have a understanding of what to expect when it comes to New York. Um but yeah, my other commentary, just so you guys are well aware of it, is again, now that you have an idea of all the arrival flows, remember the score five departure and the Kennedy five departure. You're coming out this way and you're coming out this way. You're going to get vectored this way or this way or that way. You're going to be sent on your way. However, because of these arrivals and your final airspace and everything, certain airspace delegations need to be obeyed. Now, it's just important. The most important thing to having a good time is not forgetting about the left turn. Left turn. Do not forget about the left turn on the score five departure and the Kennedy five departure, unless you've been assigned the idle while climb, which is rare depending upon your aircraft type. However, left turn, left turn, left turn. Do not violate LaGuardia's airspace. It will piss off a lot of people on VATSIM. You do not want to do it. Make the left turn. I hope this video was uh, helpful for most of you. Um, it is definitely a longer video than I anticipated, but it should give you a good idea into the complexity of Kennedy airspace when we're running on the three ones here on Vatsim and uh, just have some happy flying times here in the New York airspace.